Hello and in today's Mac App Development tutorial we're going to look at how to use NS Table View. Now NS Table View is the class and the user interface element we use to display dynamic data in our application. Now I usually like to do videos on things that there aren't, there aren't many other videos on and they're, they're quite unique but this is not one of those. There are loads of videos on NS Table View but we're going to be doing some more advanced stuff with NS Table View in the future that isn't covered in other videos so this is a necessary predicate and um, for anyone who's w watching these videos as a complete course of sorts then just to be comprehensive I thought I would include this so what what um, what is a table view for well, you can do several things with it obviously you can create it so the user can add and delete rows and just stuff like that but in, in this video, literally all, all we're going to look at is how do, how do we get data into the, into the table view. Now, let's talk about that for a second. If you've seen my video on delegation, you know that in, in, in Cocoa, which is the Mac development framework, you, you want to maintain good model view controller architecture. Well, what does that mean? Well, you don't, you don't want your model, your data, to be interacting directly with the view which in this case is your table view so how do you do that well you have some intermediary um, <laughs> intermediary control um, controller in the middle that knows that knows how to provide the the uh, data for the table view in the in the format that it understands and it has to be in a specific format because it's a generic view object so it has to be uh, in a in a way that it understands so what we do with a data, a, a data source like a delegate is we we we, we return we return our data according to those methods in in a way that those methods understand. So without 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 further ado, let's let's uh, dive in. If we look at my screen here, we notice that I've got this uh, um struct here that's just a a person struct it's got a name and an age we're gonna uh, just display the name in one column and the age in a different column and now I've just got important in model view controller and a lot of the kind of brief demos don't show this but what we we're normally going to want to be um, getting data for our application from some external external API where whether that be core data or an archive so it's unrealistic that we're just going to create the objects that we're going to use for our data directly in the class. So, to 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 avo to avoid that, well, what what we're going to do in this um, in my example is I've created uh, my my person objects that we're going to display in the table rows, but I've I've um, created them in a separate function called get sample data, which returns an array of these person objects and we can see that in the return statement it just it just creates an array binding all binding all those objects together so that then when we because we need to have access to this in the class that that uh, that controls our table view so when we create that we're not going to be creating um, instances of the person object right, right in the Right, right in the view class, like we shouldn't be doing. What we can do is um, do something like let people equal person dot get sample data, and that is much like. More like how you're going to be doing it with a real world API than than um uh, unlike a lot of these other tutorials show you. So uh, now now that we understand the data, let's dive into the um actual table view. So of course we understand that this returns an array of person objects, and we know that to get the values for those objects, which we're going to need to know later to obviously populate the cells, they have. Each of these person objects has 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 a var for name and a var for age. So 
that's how we we understand our data structure and how we know what um we can pull out of it so if we go into our um where our main main window is now we can see that i i've created an instance of just an ns object that is bound to something called table control that's this file here and that's the, this is the class that i'm going to connect to um my my table view that is going to be the data data source for um my table view so this is my controller i've got my, i've got my model and the other file my view and then my controller so we're 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 in good shape here so um let's actually just go back into our uh, main window and just drag on um a table view So I'm just going to say that I want a table view and scroll up because it um, and I'm just going to drag it in. I've not done much auto layout in these videos, so we're going to use auto layout to make sure it sticks to the side. So what I'm going to do is drag. Drag this control out and then drag it to the side and to make sure it always sticks there regardless of whether I change the window or not. I'm going to go down here and go reset to suggested constraints. Some um, sort of simple auto layout going on there. So um, one thing we should look at in the I don't think that's true for some reason. Well, one thing we should look at in our objects panel here is um, what the table view object gave us. Because you think, oh well, I'd, I just asked for I just asked for a table view, so um, it will just give me one object that can, contains all that stuff. But that is actually not the case. It, it gives you a, a whole load of um, a whole load of stuff which is important when you when you're doing detailed interactions with it which we're going to be doing in future videos so I'm actually just going to show my outline browser here and we see um, that in what well, what they actually gave us is a bordered scroll view with some scroll bars inside it and um, we know we can obviously know what those are when you need to scroll the data we got a clip view and then inside that we get a, ta a table view with each object for a table column. Now that's important to know because when we, we want to dynamically change a column, we, we we need to know that it's a separate object. So, and um, that's important. Now you'll notice that by default, I I can just click um in these table view cells and just modify them directly. That's because that's because their views they're akin to the static option in uh, t table views on iOS they, they, they don't display dynamic data so what do we need to do to change that well we need to go back to our uh, t table view and instead of saying instead of saying it's a view based table view we're going to say it's a cell based table view that's going to get our our data not from it interface builder but from the data source we specify so that's that's that done now uh, um we know that we've got an instance of this table control object so let's let's um implement that so in our in our table control the first thing we need to do is get get access to our data from our model um and the, so that it's available in this class. So we're going to do what I showed before. We're going to say let people equal the result of that function that I showed before. So person 
dot get sample data and we already know we already know what format that's in so we know how to deal with it. Now just in our controller we're, we're not doing any model stuff at all. We're, we're only using that one line to to get our model so we're we're in, we're in good shape here. What do we need um in order for this to be a table view data source? Well I said because it's a view it's very because table view is a view it's very very generic. We don't really want to be a, a, editing the table view so we need to conform to its uh, uh, to its uh, protocols that we that are already defined so to do that we're going to say this object conforms to the NS table view data source protocol now uh, um, I'm actually going to go back to Interface Builder and connect this table control object to our table so that the table knows that the date, its data source is that table control object because just because we're saying we can be a data source doesn't mean we are one. So I'm going to um, right click the table view and and say that our data source, and this is just a var on the table view, is that is that object that we created. Um, so now, how do we uh, actually provide the data? Well, we're going to go back to our table controller, and we're going to provide the data now at a minimum on macOS to. Uh, to be a table view data source, you, you you need to tell it a few things. You need to tell it how many how many rows to display, and you need to tell it obviously what content to show in which cell. So the first one's the easiest. So that's what we're going to do, do first. Um, and that method is called number of rows in table view. So because I conform to that protocol, if I start typing it knows. I want to write number of rows in table view and notice that that just returns an integer now how do we get an integer out of this uh, object well we know this object is an, is an array and actually if I um, select this it, it doesn't need to tell me that it's person array so we, kn we know that that's an array how do we get the number of of things in an array. Well, we we just say array name dot count. So all we need all we need to do to satisfy this part of the protocol is just say return people dot count. Now the, the next one is a little more complicated, but not 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 too much. We need we need to tell it. What what object to display for um, which part of the table? So that method is called object for something like object table view uh, object value for table column row. Um, so. Uh, this is going to get called every time we want um, every time we want to f fill up a new a new cell with those n number of cells that we defined. So uh, one thing to be aware of with this now actually says it in Apple's documentation is because this is called a lot. You d you don't want to actually do anything in in this function. You you don't want to do complicated sort of to figure it out here. You just li you just literally want to. Do the bare minimum we can and return the data for specific cell. So, how do how do we know what um what data to return? Well, what 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 uh the data for a particular row is easy because we get we get given the row here as a as a parameter. So all we need to all we need to do is uh, um get get the get the value in the array that's equal to whatever this row is uh, and we know we're going to have the same number of values as rows because 
we we set the count here based on that array. Um, but how do we know what column we're in? Well, this is surprisingly complicated. Um, we get we get given the column passed to us here, so that's good. Notice no, notice it's it's an optional because the column could possibly not be set. Um, and wh why why is it why is it done like this? Well, we um, part of table view is that users can change uh, what the the order of the columns. So we can't just say first column, second column because uh, the the they might not be the first column and second column. So we need some independent way to identify them. How do we do that? Well, fortunately, um. T t table columns in inherit from NSView, which has an identifier on it, which we can use programmatically. So we're going to go back into our into our interface, and we're going to select the table column this time, and we're going to say the first table column in our identity inspector. The first table column has an identifier of name because it's the person's name and the second table column has an identifier of age so how do we then uh, look at the identifier and depending on what it is display the proper information well um, we we need because that because there could be because there's in our cases there's two columns that it could be we we need to do different stuff depending on which column it is so we're gonna do do that with a switch statement um because you could potentially have uh, uh, infinite columns and an infinite number of identifiers we we need to provide a, a default case here and um we 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 we're gonna specify the two columns that we do have so we're just gonna say if it's not any of those two columns I don't know what to do so I'm just gonna re return nil What, what do we want to switch based on? Well, we get the table column as table column, so we want to switch on table column, and, uh, and that's an optional, but I, I know that it's going to be set by this point, so I'm, I'm just going to force on wrap it. And what part of the table column do I want to look at to, what property on table column do I want to look at to figure out which column it is? Well, we already seen we want to look at the eight. Um, Identifier. Now, what are the cases? Well, the, ca the cases are name and age. So you'd, you'd think you could just do strings, right? This goes. This goes back to one of my other videos on naming stuff in Cocoa. But Apple have pretty much forced you not to um, use kind of raw, raw strings for names. To, to, because uh, this, this identifier. Uh, over here isn't actually a raw string it looks like one but it's wrapped in a special object so if we um put a raw string here it would it wouldn't match so what do we need to put well for each uh, we're, we're gonna need two cases but let's just do the first case first um uh, uh, and we, we we need to say um we're looking for an ns user interface identifier and you know it just it came up by default because it knows that that's what I want to put here um, and the identifier we're looking for if it's this case is the a string of name so if the identifier for the table column's name what we're going what we're going to do well 
we're gonna obviously look we need to return something because we need to return it back to our table view and what we're gonna return well obviously we're gonna look in our people array at, in whatever row was um, pa passed to us here so like I said before we know what, what we know what row we're in so we're just gonna look at that row and then this is why we're doing these case statements because we need to know which which property now of that of that particular person to return well in this case because we've said that this is the case where our identifier's name we want to return the name property so I'm just going to say dot name and I'm a little concerned about why that's not showing up but if we've got an error we'll find out in a minute Um, because I put a comma rather than a dot, that explains it. Um, notice that's properly uh, syntax highlighted now. So sorry about that. Well, what's what's the other case we know about? We're, we're we've already dealt with the default case, but there's another case where we know what to do. So because the code is so similar, I'm just gonna actually. copy this code and I'm going to paste it down here as a separate case and we're, do we're dealing with um, this, this case is the age so we want to get the want to get the uh, still want to get the person for whatever whatever row we're in but this time we want to get the age property now if I if I run this and cross my fingers hopefully I should I should have my data in uh, and y yes there, there there we are there's there's the data for all our um, people that we've got in our array so in this video we we showed an NS table view which is shown in lots of videos but we showed how to properly separate, e even in a demo, properly separate our data from our controller. So um, that video went on for a lot longer than I wanted, but I hope it's helpful and say it's an important prerequisite for some more interesting stuff. Now, so let's briefly, briefly review the salient things that we did. We told it, we, we set ourselves as a data source, and we know that to be a data source we have to provide certain information. We have to provide um, the number of rows in our table view uh, and the where how to get specific objects or specific columns in our table. Um, we have to know our, our, our data structure well enough to know how we're going to retrieve that information. Which is why I started looking at the data structure rather than the table view itself. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. bye, -bye.